Eat this chili. <laughs> Got it. I couldn't think of a better way to start this live feed than me eating chili. Than you eating, yeah. There's nothing, not, nothing more fitting. All right. Here we go in five, four, three, two, and one. Hello and good evening. Welcome to the 2021 United Wiffle Live Draw for this uh, Saturday's NCT right here on Facebook, along with Paul Cook from MAW. I'm your host, Anthony Dioria of the Once Proud Let's Go Sunday podcast. Uh, don't worry, we'll be back this winter with plenty of content. Uh, but we're here coming to you live to present the official Route 1 Draw for Groups A and Group B for this Saturday's NCT at the beautiful People's Bank Park, home of the York Revolution. Uh, they've been so gracious to have us back for a second year, and we are thrilled that we can actually have fans of the building this year. Uh, 44 teams from around the country will descend upon York this weekend for the most anticipated fast pitch wiffle ball tournament of the year. With that being said, I want to bring in Paul Cook, one of the directors of the great Mid Atlantic Wiffle Ball League and a core member of the United Wiffle staff. Paul, how you doing, pal? Thanks for having me, Anthony. Uh, like you said, I think you summed it all up. We're really, really excited to get this going. It's been a long year. A lot of work went into this and a lot of anticipation. And, you know, we're almost there four days. Can't wait. Yeah, it's hard to believe that we've come from just like a random Zoom meeting uh, February of 2020 being like, hey, you want to, guys want to run a fast pitch wiffle ball tournament? And now we're here. We're back for a second year and uh, we've expanded the tournament for more teams. We've tweaked the format a little bit to incorporate those four teams, uh, four extra teams. And, um, we had a couple on the wait list again this year, but again, basically locked in 44 teams, 12 teams are able to earn bids through their, uh, through our linked tournament series. And then the other 32 teams, which we will draw today, uh, will be um, at large bids for lack of a better term. All right, Paul, what are you lo most looking forward to this weekend? Um, I'm really looking forward to this first round with the 32 teams. I think it's going to be a bit of a minefield. Uh, there's a lot of competitive teams in this group. Um, I think the floor rose a little bit from last year. I think even more than the floor rising, I think that middle section got a lot bigger. There's a lot of teams that have one or two good pitchers, have some, have some hitters, um, you know, in one or two games, they can really pull an upset. And with this format, those, uh, those early losses really had those early wins and losses really have an impact. So some of these teams that we may not think of as contenders can really shape the tournaments. I think that's really exciting. I agree. Uh, I think if you look at a lot of the rosters, there's a lot of, of the same from last year, but there's also a lot of changeover. There's a lot of teams that have eventually uh, broken up, like a team like the Bronx Royals are essentially on four or five different teams this year, all talented players. Um, yeah, and these at-large teams, you know, they haven't really necessarily played together all year as a team. They This is why they're in the at-large position. They didn't play those linked tournaments as a team. And um, I think that Saturday morning is going to be pretty wild, and anybody can make it through to play those 12 teams that advance into route two. Um, so we shall see. Um, all right. So before the draw, we just want to shout out some of our sponsors. Uh, again, any great event can't run without, um, you know, having people behind us to basically, you know, help us get it done. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to just kind of share my screen real quick and basically, um, you know, here are some of our sponsors. So we have uh, the New York Screwballs and Give and Go, uh, which is the Jerry and John Checchio. Uh, from our Long Island Golden Stick region. We've got Woody's Exterminating, Ryan Wood, member of the usual suspects. Oh, too, zoom in too far. Uh, certified Auto Repair from Connecticut. That's our friend Josh Pagano. Uh, Go Geo Couriers, JD from the uh, New York Throwbacks and 710 Mafia. Uh, Fisher Shipping, our buddy Dave Fisher, who's been around for 20, 25 years. Um, Kevin Babbler of Babs Big Flies. Um, Waterbat, our friend Tim Dean, who's also a member of the United Wiffle Panel. Uh, True North Tech. Fonkai Apparel, our friend Brian DiNapoli, and of course, this last logo who's uh, slipping my mind right now, but I have it written down. The Walk-Off uh, Bat Company. Walk -off Bat. Yes, our newest sponsor, the yeah. Walk-Off Bat. That's why, why <laughs> I was I don't recognize it right away. Uh, who were kindly enough to donate a bat uh, for us to raffle off at this weekend's tournament. I do know that a handful of other players, including um, like Jordan Robles, have already got their hands on a Walk-Off Bat. Nothing but positive reviews so far. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it in action. It could be the next wave of fast pitch uh, bats moving forward. And um, uh, we shall see. It should be very, very exciting. Yeah, it's really always really cool to have new equipment, and uh, that that bat definitely passes the eye test. And if it uh, if it can hit, yeah, I, I definitely think it'll be a a, a big uh, a big star here. 
I agree. Um, all right. So a few other thanks. We also want to thank Trent Steffs, uh, another member of the Wiffle Ball community, uh, for making the all-tournament team shirts. Those are going to look really, really sick. Also want to thank two companies of Novus and Voot Grips, uh, who are, with their continued support have provided a lot of the uniforms, a lot of the clothing that our players are going to be wearing this weekend, as well as for Voot Grips, providing those nice back grips that a lot of our players have uh, come to love over the last couple of years. Um, all right, Paul. So before we get to the draw, just a couple of reminders about the schedule for the weekend. So I'm going to make you the host real quick so you can share your screen and you're going to kind of give us a brief little walkthrough about how uh, this tournament essentially is going to be laid out this weekend. Yeah. So like starting with what we're going to be going over tonight, again, this is um, basically the way Saturday is split is there are two separate, um, it's not the one I want to show, but there are two separate um, brackets on Saturday um, we have route one and route two. So route one is what we're going to be dealing with tonight. Like, like, uh, food said, this is the 32 at large teams for lack of a better word. Um, uh, this is very, very similar to last year's bracket of preliminary rounds for anyone that was here last year. Um, you're going to start just like a normal bracket, as you can see here, if you keep winning, you keep advancing three wins, get you through to Saturday, not only, I mean, to Sunday, not only get you through the Sunday, but put you in the top 10 in the final 16. Uh, if you lose a game, you drop down to, for lack of a better term, the loser's bracket, the one loss bracket, which I'll show here real quick. Um, and uh, you'll be taking on, you know, obviously, as it, as, it, as the name implies, you'll be taking on all other one loss teams. Here it is. Um, so, and then if you, if you make your way through here without getting another loss, you go on to Sunday in the final 22. Um, if you do lose that first game, it adds two games onto your schedule. It adds a, a, a fourth game for um, Saturday. You've ended up going three and one or two and two or, or one and three at that point or, or oh and three, I guess. Um, and it also adds another game onto your Sunday schedule. You got to play in that round of 22 to play your way in. So every win, very important in this, uh, this tournament. Again, that just goes back to anyone can make an impact in this. You, you, you get on a hot run Saturday morning, you win three games. You know, you may not be one of those contenders, but all of a sudden you're going to find yourself, you know, for a real shot at the national championship. And if you're not, you can really impact the tournament. This isn't one of those tournaments where um, you may you have a win at nine o'clock and then by noon, it really doesn't matter. Those wins and losses are going to carry with you throughout the day. So that should make for a real exciting uh, uh, Saturday morning. And then the two loss group here in route two, again, if you lose another game in routes um, in the uh, first part of route one, um, I'm not sure you can see this, um, but anyway, yeah, it's just the same thing. And then those, those, if, if you lose two games, but then you end up going two and two, um, you're going to end up, uh, um, you, you detour over to route two and that's our second group of games on Saturday. So it's two and two teams are going to move over here to route two, which we'll show in a second. Um, So while Paul's bringing that up, basically, again, at the end of the day, you got to win wiffle ball games in order to advance. That's what it's all about, yeah. You go 0-3, you're done. If you win one of those early games, you you have a chance to be to get to that 2-2 and two point. But basically 0-3, and 1-3, and three, your day is going to be over on Saturday. You get to 2-2, two and two, you still got a long way to go, but you're still in it. 3-1, uh, 3-0, and three and one, three and oh, obviously you put yourselves in the driver's seat for um, a better chance to get to the final 16. Yep. It, it, it's definitely a different looking bracket, but it's really that simple. It's actually a lot simpler than a, a lot of brackets that look simpler. It's just win, you're good, uh, you know, lose, you just will make it through. These teams earned it with their performance this year or their performance last year. Um, they'll have another team that's in the same position as, as them in their pool, and then they'll have two of these two and two teams. Those two and two teams can still come back. That'd be a great story if that happens. Uh, the heck of a Cinderella story, but they got their work cut out for them. Um, facing a couple fresh teams. So it'll be lots of games on Saturday. Um, I think in total it's uh, 78 games. I think we played 79 last year, so about the same, but a lot of good wiffle ball on Saturday. And then uh, obviously Sunday is, you know, where it's all at. No doubt. And I think the weather looks like it's going to be a little bit better than last year. We shouldn't have that rain uh, issue where we've got to kind of move in some, yeah, knock on wood, right? Uh, where we had to like move around from Sunday morning to Saturday night. But you know, at the end of the day, that flexibility is still there because we were able to do that and still have a good day. Uh, the weather looks beautiful for Saturday. A little cool Saturday night, so make sure you have those long sleeves, make sure you have those sweats, maybe a little beanie action, and uh, yeah, then we'll be rocking and rolling, ready to go. 
Uh, Paul, with that being said, uh, I think we're ready to draw these teams, right? Yeah, let's go. I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So I'm going to share my screen with the spinner. So the way this is going to work, as you saw in the uh, the different pools, we're going to uh, pull the first two teams. Those are going to be matchup A on matchup one, and then we're going to go over to group B and do matchup one there. Then we're going to do matchup two in group A, matchup two in group B, and keep going back and forth. So we're going to do two teams at a time. The two teams that are picked will face each other in that first game. Again, at the end of the day, you may that first matchup may be really tough, but it doesn't mean you're done. All you, that means is that if you lose, you play another team that lost. If you win, you play another team that wins, which is a pretty fair uh, system, if you may, if I may say so myself. So here we go. Uh, host, oh, you have to make me the host again. Here we go. See, this is this is what we ran into before. So even though it tells me I can share my screen, it lies. Hate to see it. All right, we're going to share my screen. We're going to share the wheel of names. And here we go. So I'm going to, with the first, again, the first two teams that are going to be picked are going to face each other. Then the next two teams are going to face each other. And every so often, Paul is going to share, we're going to reshare and um, bring up the matchup so we can keep abreast. All right, Paul, you ready to go? I'm excited. Let's go. All right, here are the 32 teams just to confirm. I want to make sure we're doing this because I made a few mistakes this summer with having extra or missing teams. So it looks like we've got 32 entries. Fire me up. Here we go. Uh, First team off the board here. United with the NPT A will be participation. Uh it's going to be savvy, super savvy psychos. All right. And now let's see who they will face in their first matchup. So dramatic music. It's like really not. <laughs> it's carnival music. <laughs> it looks like they're going to be matched up against with the slow wheel. We're going to stop. It's going to be the K-9s. All right. So your first matchup in Group A will be Savvy and the K-9s. That's a fun matchup. That's a good uh, It's a good early 2010 uh, you know, Golden Stick matchup there. I agree. Love that. Uh, I'm just going to change this uh, the spin slowly thing. That was like – that's not what I thought it was going to be. It's taking forever to, to land on the name. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not too dramatic. All right, here we go. So this is going to now be the first matchup in group B. K W L Keggers. It looks like. Is this the Kalamazoo Wiffle Bowl League? That's correct, yeah. Um, this is a, a really good team for those that haven't seen them. Um, they finished second in the NWA tournament in 2020. Uh, started off good this year. They ran into some uh, issues, but um, they've, they played in a couple of MAW tournaments this year, so they got some experience in this style. They fared well. Uh, they've got a few good pitchers, some good hitters, so they're definitely a, a um, contender to uh, turn some heads. If, there we go. If not contender. Good. All right, this will be their first matchup. Who will Kalamazoo be facing? It looks like they will be facing the New York Meets. Another nice uh, first round matchup. That's is, these are two uh, two teams that are very very familiar with each other, so should nice. be fun one Bowl and company. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm listen. I like when those teams face each other because I've never seen someone from KWL play before. So this would be a good game for me to walk over and maybe do some interviews and watch, and that'll be very, very fun. All right, so we've got two matchups set up: Group A matchup one, uh, Group B matchup one. So we're going to move back over to Group A to do this matchup. Then we'll do Group B again, and then we'll pause and we'll have Paul share his screen, and we'll see where we're at. So this is Group A matchup number two. Uh, the phenom 
Hawks, it looks like. The Phenoms, probably one of the favorites to win this event. Would you agree, Paul? Yeah, they're, they're, they're built to win this. It's kind of, uh, and I'm sure they know this, they've kind of put themselves in the position where, uh, you know, they're expected to win. Um, so it'd be, be interesting to see if they can uh, they can hold up to that promise. They have a stacked roster, that's for sure. I agree. Let's see. Let's see who they're going to face in this first game. This could be a, either a very difficult matchup for somebody or a very electric matchup if they get set up with another good team. If you got the Dragons. This is an MAW team, correct? Correct, yes. This is uh, Nick Lee and Mike Bucci is the core of this team. They've got also uh, John Polanco, good young right-hander. Um, Ryan Petrone's on this team this year, and so is uh, Michael Tassana. Nice. Okay. All right, so this would be the that's matchup two in Group A. We're going to finish up here for this first set of teams. Uh, group B, matchup number two. These next two teams will face each other in group B. Will be a food host show that I'm eating. <laughs> wow. It is way too beautiful. Here we go. This is not the same yard team, though. There's a couple of different names here. The way too beautiful franchise. Well, I'll finish second place in the Gold Stick Yard Players Cup this year. Uh, let's see how they can do here in the fast pitch scene. Let's see, see who they will be facing here in their first round matchup. This is matchup number two. Group B. Looks like they will be facing the Cardinals. Oh, where are the Cardinals from? So the Cardinals are from St. Louis. Um <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to say it like that. The uh, core of their team is um, uh, Sam Skibby and uh, Cam Smith, who were two of the five guys on uh, the Midwest Monstars last year who had a run to the quarterfinals. So they're joined by Josh Rogers, who had a really good year in the first year of Mo With out there in St. Louis. Uh, they've also got uh, Sam's brother, Gus, who's a very, very good hitter for years in the NWA tournament. And um, also Cole Layden, who was also on that Monstars team this year. So watch out for that team. They, they, they're uh, Cam Smith right now is his pitch is pitching as good as anyone uh, in the country. Um, yet you never know any given weekend that could change. But you know he's in a real groove right now. That team's got hitters. No doubt. I mean, pitching in the Northeast is always a little different than pitching in the Midwest. So we'll see how that translates. All right, Paul, I've made you the host. Why don't you share your screen and let's give everyone an update on where we've got matchups so far. All right, so let's start off in bracket A. We've got Savvy versus K9, K9s and Phenoms versus Dragons. So this will also be the order of that of that round for the winner's bracket. It changes when you go into the loser's brackets, and that's just so we don't repeat matchups. Um, but the winner of these two games will face each other, so it would be some combination of those four teams. Then over in bracket B, we got uh, Cal, uh, KWL. I wrote KWL Kalamazoo. KWL Keggers uh, versus the New York Meets and Way Too Beautiful versus Cardinals. So uh, four four pretty good teams uh, so far. Some you know really good matchups. I think you can I think you can kind of look at these and you know sort of pick out a favorite in each one. But I think all these four games you know are going to be competitive. Um, you know, one way or another. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's get back to the the wheel here. So all let's. Right. Uh, am I? I'm still not sharing. Right, so I have to. Do I got to share you. Hold on. Yep. 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 All right. So again, you know, the moral of the story here, folks, is really no matter who you play, you got to win a couple of games to, to, to get your tournament off on the right foot. Um, if you don't win games, you're not going to win. It's really very simple. It's, it's a national championship. It's all about winning. <laughs> all right, here we go. So this will be matchup number three in group A. We got NSR, the new school risers. Paul, anything you want to say about the new school risers? Um, I don't think whoever this next team that comes up, I don't think you want to face them in this first game. Um, you know, not knowing what they're going to do pitching wise, if they pitch Cap their first game, Cap is as good as anyone when he's fresh. Honestly, though, he may actually be better when he's not fresh, but um, you know, he, he's a real good pitcher. Uh, can beat anyone. This team has some hitters. Jerry Hill is a really sneaky, good hitter. Cap is a great hitter. Um, watch out for this team if you match up with them early. All 
All right, let's see who they're going to be facing. Now, if you're a gold stick guy, you're hearing this song again for the whole world. <laughs> Looks like they're going to be facing the Missouri with Miracle. I don't know anything about these guys. Uh, I so, yeah, yeah, so so we talked about the uh, Cardinals earlier. Um, this year uh, was the first year of the Mo with Wiffle Ball League, which Cam Smith of the Cardinals was kind of spearheading him and Josh Rogers, I, I believe. Um, Mo with Miracles, the second team from this league. Uh, this team, this league was very, very pitching heavy in their heavy in their first year, as you would kind of expect from a fast pitch league. Yeah. It takes a while for hitters to get used to that. Um, so this this team has this team goes. Uh, it's four guys. They go four pitchers deep, but really three pretty good pitchers deep. Their big thing is going to be how well they command. Um, there's a five, three count in Mo whiff. So kind of adjusting to, um, I'm sorry, it's five, two, it's five, two count in Mo whiff. So adjusting to the four balls, three, uh, four strikes, three ball, four balls, three strikes, um, you know, could present some challenges, but these guys have some arms. This will be a fun game to watch. This, could, this is a, a coin toss. This would go either way. Nice little hear it. And yeah, they're making, making a good point about the, uh, the the pitch count because all the leagues kind of all do something different. Mid-Atlantic starts with a strike, right? You said Mo Whiff is five and two. All those little things that you do all year, when you get to the championship, you got to really be able to like, listen, I only get four balls now. Or now for Mid-Atlantic guys, wait, I get an extra strike now. So it totally changes um, both from a pitching standpoint, how you go after a hitter, and then from a batting standpoint, how you feel comfortable in the box, knowing you may have an extra strike or one less ball, totally changes it. All right, yep, let's absolutely. go on over. Let's go on over to Group B now. This would be matchup number three, correct? That's right. Yep. Here we go. Group B, matchup number three. So we've got five matchups set so far. So our route one, we've got the six matchups here on the first team. In that matchup will be the North Stars. The North Stars out of Minnesota, as their name implies. Um, this is guys from both HRL and MNWA, which are the two main leagues in Minnesota. Um, a couple guys with experience. Austin Steffies was a member of um, the Mod Stars last year. Uh, the guy to watch out for the, on the North Stars is Evan Sibbett. Uh, he threw really, really well at the NWA tournament. Uh, he threw four games. He had three shutouts among those four games. Uh, he's really seemed to come into his own as a pitcher. So he's a he's a guy to keep your eye on in this team. Oh, very good. Again, another one of these up and coming leagues and teams that people aren't going to know a lot about, but they're certainly going to learn a lot about this weekend. Let's see who they're going to be facing in this third matchup of Duke D. We'll be taking on the 603 Whistle Club, Massachusetts, New England's finest. Um, these guys have played Whistle Ball for a very, very long time. This is a classic matchup of uh, what? I guess like a lot of young, inexperienced Whifflers against extremely older and experienced Whifflers. So this, this could be it could be an interesting matchup. Yeah, that, that, that is an interesting matchup. I mean, you know, the um, we said there's some there's just there's what just one monster player on the North Stars, but there's some. Um, Monstars holdovers there, and the Monstars, of course, you know, eliminated 603 last year. I'm really interested in seeing 603 this year because they've changed up their roster. Last year was all veteran. This year they've added Jeff Lopes and uh, Adam Briggio, so they kind of have some youth to go with the uh, the uh, veteranosity there. So it'll be an interest, in, interesting to see how they kind of work that line up in those pitching matchups. Is veteranosity a word, Paul? Uh, uh, Buckshaw Walter used to use. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it is a word, but yeah, it's in my baseball vocabulary. You know? <laughs> I like that. All right. So that is six total matchups. That's 12 teams. All right. We've got 20 teams remaining. So this is going to be the fourth matchup of group A. Then we'll do fourth matchup group B and then we'll pause and again, reset and review. Here we go. All right, we've got team punishment. So punishment is out of Texas, one of four Texas teams this year. Um, they won the Texas State Championship, which is medium pitch. That was a um, a twenty or twenty one team tournament. It was, you know, pretty big tournament. They won that. Two weeks later, they came out without their best pitcher, got to the semifinals in the uh, fast pitch Texas Championship. 
Uh, they've also added um, a guy, Drew Dobbins, who many think um, is the best, um, or not who many think. I, I've seen a couple of people say he may be the best uh, pitcher in Texas right now, or at least the first full-time one. It's hard, hard to say that when Cooper Rockle's out there. But, uh, you know, this, this will be a, a fun and interesting team to watch. I don't know how well they'll hit. Um, you know, you don't know if like nerves will get to them, but these guys are pumped and ready to go and they've, they've got some arms. No doubt. And that tends to be the MO with some of these uh, teams that no one knows about. They have a, they have a guy that, you know, we can throw gas for four or five innings, but do they have the offense to actually make it worth it and win a game? So yeah. we shall see because, because the competition, nothing against Texas. We know the competition at this event uh, will be a lot better. All right, right. Let's see who they will be facing in their first round matchup here. They will be facing Unleashed. That's where you were saying, you know, North Star 603 can kind of be looked at a little bit as, you know, young versus uh, veterans. This, I think, even more so. Um, you know, all of punishments guys, I think, are, you know, college age, just out of college, that sort of, you know, early 20s type deal. Uh, Unleashed, a very veteran roster led by Joe Nord. Um, got a lot of good veteran players on that, on that team. You know, that's a real interesting matchup. I agree. All right. So that was, um, that was. I game four of bracket A. Okay. So now we're going to do game four of bracket B and then we'll pause. A lot of better in Austria. Ready. Oh, here we go. Wait a minute. Probably the, one of the more interesting teams we want to see play this weekend. The Jersey Lemonheads. A lot of hot guys. A lot of attractive guys. Sorry, Lanning, and I know you think that's one of my catchphrases, but these are far, four or five attractive guys on this team, and and, and can play. I mean, this is a this is a real dark horse to you know to make a run here. Uh, between Ray and Mike Styles, they've got two big power arms. They got good hitters with Timmy Beck and uh, Pete Slater. Um, this is just a good all around team. I agree. This is a team you don't want to be facing uh, early in your tournament. You don't want to be facing them late in the tournament. Styles was throwing some gas in his video the other day. We know Ray is just as good as anybody out there in the fast pitch. But again, are they going to be able to hit enough to make it far? So we shall see. Let's see yeah. who they're going to be facing in their first round matchup. Nice, a little local flavor yeah. in this matchup, and the late addition to Screw You with the John Checho as captain. Yeah, so Screw You is one, I think, uh, I think the last team um, to uh, get into the tournament. Um, but, like, don't let that fool you. That's kind of how the, the floor has risen this year. The, uh, the last team, last couple teams in were, you know, as you would expect, those, those, those taped together teams. But there's some, you know, talent on here. Um, they've got two pitchers, Dan Moore and Anthony LaValle. Uh, well, Valley's really, I think, the guy to kind of, you know, look uh, look at. Um, not a lot of guys have seen him. He's just a clean ball guy. He has some command issues, but when he's throwing it over, he's as good as anyone. So uh, they got, yeah, this, this, will, this will be a fun team to watch. I think this will be a fun first game. He's, like you said, these guys are familiar with each other. From, oh, very uh, familiar. There's going to be a lot of shit talking between Dan Moore <laughs> and these guys. Uh, I, can, I can early, I feel like my phone's about to start blowing up in the group chat from that, so that should be a lot of fun. All right, Paul, so that's uh, four matchups in each group. I'm going to make you the host again real quick so you right. can uh, give us an update on our matchups here. Perfect. Uh, this is, this is, this matchup is actually, is a very exciting. This is, this is the kind of matchup that you want to see, especially if you're a guy who plays in the local leagues, because it's guys that usually don't play together that now are going to play together in a totally different format. And it should be an electric factory. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to it too. And I don't even play up there, but just, just, yeah, just, just knowing all those guys. And like you said, the, uh, I think the shit talk will be fun in that one. Um, all right. So our game three in bracket A is New School Risers, Mo with Miracle. New School Risers out of Maryland, Virginia, Mo with Miracle out of uh, Missouri, and then Punishment out of Texas versus Unleashed, uh, basically based out of New York. Then over in bracket B, we've got the North Stars from Minnesota versus 603 Club from New Hampshire, the Jersey Lemonheads from New Jersey, obviously, and then a Screw You out of New York. Um, and then if we look at, if we go down the line here, 
Obviously, the winner of Lemonhead Screw You will face the winner of North Stars in 603, which I think a, a Lemonhead 603 would be a nice second round matchup. Two teams that would like to face each other maybe later in the event. But again, one of, one of those teams is going to be one and one possibly after that game and could have some work to do. Um, whereas on the other side with the new school risers, probably the favorite of that game. Unleashed, probably the favorite in that game. The two of them, we would love to go 2 0 and get a head start on facing either possibly the Phenoms or um, savvier canines in that situation. Yeah. I mean, this, this, this second group here, the second group of four teams in a uh, bracket, a, I think is, I think it's really kind of up for grabs. Um, you know, I think, it, I, I think like you said, Anthony, you know, unleash the new school riser is definitely sort of the favorites in those two matchups, but those other teams, you know, uh, you can't count out punishment and Mo with miracle. They've got the pitching. If you have the pitching, you have a puncher's chance. You just need, you need that one swing. That's all you kind of need. Um, but yeah, this, this block here is really up for grabs. This is a good opportunity for all four of these teams to go two and oh, and really put themselves in a great position. All right, let's get back to the wheel. We've got uh, four more matchups on each side. We've got 16 teams remaining. Fire me up. Let's go. Host return wheel of names projected. Here we go. Group a, this is matchup number five. Yep. Let's see what we got here. Oh, these two would be next to each other. Let's see if we're gonna get picked. Which one will it be? Wow, that's right on the line. Pretty cool, wheel of names. Uh, and it's gonna be Ridley Park. Uh, I'm actually not yeah. sure who's on this team. I forgot between this and the long balls. Can you maybe remind us and everybody? Yeah, so um Ridley Park is again for the second straight year sending three teams to the national championship. They they changed their strategy this year. Last year, their strategy, they kind of just stuck to their MAW teams. This year, they put together one team uh, with the idea of it being their best overall players to really try to win this. That's this team. So it's Tommy Loftus is the captain, uh, Sean Bing there, Cam Farrow, Teddy Drescher, and Noah Silverman. So this is a deep, deep pitching team. All five of those guys can pitch, and all five of those guys can pitch multiple games. They can pitch multiple days. Um, and it's also a better offensive team than you may think but they do run hot and cold. So that's going to be the big thing. If they, if they can get their hits and those guys pitch like they can, they can make a run. I agree. I mean, when you, there's those five names, any one of those could be an ace on a lot yeah. of teams. And, and Teddy this year, all I see is videos of him hitting home runs. So I think yeah. this is a very dangerous team that, again, you don't want to be facing. But like you said, they could be streaky. Sometimes these young teams, you know, they're very boomer bust. And, you know, they could go 3-0. They could go 0-3, honestly. We won't know yep. until we actually see who their matchup is going to be against, which we'll find out right now. That team may have the largest variation in their outcomes of any other team. I mean, it's time for Ridley Park to take the next step in the whistle I agree. Uh, community. Oh, it looks like they're going to be facing another MAW team, the OG Goon Squad. So, again, another one of these similar to the Lemonhead Screw You matchup, a lot of familiarity going to be going on in this game. A lot of guys that know each other. This should be really, really good. Yep, this, this should be a good matchup. Um, the OG Goon Squad uh, is going to have Jose Marte back. Um, he's been out all year, so his arm should be fresh. He's, you know, anyone that saw him had a real good tournament last year uh, at United Whiffs for uh, – for the goon squad. Um, he's got an electric arm goon squads. Good, good. They got they added Dougie Baker this year. So they got a little more pitching depth. Um, watch out for Andrew Stink. He may be the most underrated hitter in wiffle ball. He's just a, a really, really solid hitter. He's been one of the best hitters in MAW two straight seasons uh, as a, you know, as a, there, as a, he was basically a rookie in 2020. So um, watch out for him. All right, so there's your matchup number five in Group A. We have Ridley Park and the OG Goon Squad. We're going to move over to Group B, matchup number five. I like this matchup so far, Paul. I think it's going to be good to this first game. And again, the first game is very important. It really sets the tone for the next two games. Yep, exactly. You, you, you got to come out. Uh, you got to come out for plan. All right, so uh, team number one in matchup five in Group B, we have Anarchy. A uh, couple guys from Louisiana, Sean Earhart, also on this team. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so, uh, you know, based out of Louisiana, Ben Schaefer is the captain. Uh, Riker Hall Holloway is probably their ace. He's also from Louisiana. Um, uh, ben can hit a little bit. Uh, Riker's got a real good arm. He's just, he's kind of just one of those, you know, he's got a lot of, 
he's got a lot of wiffle reps, uh, but maybe not a lot of experience in these type, type of tournaments. I, I still, last year, he was still kind of working through how to pitch certain guys, how to handle himself in certain situations. It'll be interesting to see if he's taking a step forward with that. But they got a little more pitching depth than they did last year. They got um, Ethan Weiner on their team this year. I know his arm was hurting him, but if he can handle a game or so, that gives him another option. Babs is on this team, and as you said, uh, Sean Earhart. So a much deeper roster than the three-man team that Anarchy had last year. Yeah, and a really a true United Wiffle Bowl team because you got two yeah. guys from, from Louisiana. you got Babs from California. you got Ethan from New England up in uh, Massachusetts. I think he's actually from Vermont. And you have Sean Earhart, known as Swan, from New Jersey. So a classic United Wiffle Bowl team of four different yeah. states being represented. Love to see it. All right, let's see who they are going to face. Who are the Claws, Paul? Tell us about them. So the Claws, uh, we talked about Screw You earlier. Claws just got in before them as the second to last team. Again, another sort of paced together team, but a real a real fun, interesting one. So Andrew Stone's the captain. Um, uh, Andrew from uh, New York near like the kit, the, you know, the Canadian border. I don't even know what you call it. Do you even call that upstate or what do you call uh, it? They would call it uh, Southern Canada, probably. Okay. <laughs> call it upstate, definitely. Up, really upstate. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, Stone, of course, uh, one, of the, you know, one of the great guys in wiffle ball, just, you know, um, always following everything, always into it. Uh, he put this team together at the last minute. Uh, it's got uh, Gerard Fitzgerald, so a veteran hitter there. Um, and a couple of guys to keep your eyes on are uh, two, uh, I think two rookies um, from Maine, uh, Lucas Francis and Ryan Norris. They played on Boys in the Barn in the Vermont region of uh, Golden Stick Yard. Then they also competed in one ECW uh, tournament. I think the second ECW tournament, they finished second out of like seven or so teams. Um, they were actually up on the high rollers um, in the final inning until um, uh, Noter hit a walk off. But Francis has a good arm. Uh, he's a left-handed pitcher. Norris has a good arm. So they got a couple arms. There are a couple of young arms. These are baseball players, um, you know, young baseball players in good shape that they can really ride. Um, who's their fifth? Oh, and their fifth, uh, Rob Sutton, so a good veteran presence there gives them gives them another arm if they you know if they need it for maybe a game. But um, yeah, this this is a team to watch, and this this is a this is a good even matchup with them in Anarchy. We're just gonna say this couldn't be more even. I think if both yeah. if both of these teams couldn't be happier about possibly moving one and zero because they both yeah. know that they could win this game. Um, we I got to actually face Boys in the Barn at the Golden Stick Open this year uh, in the elimination round, the round of twenty or okay. round of sixteen. I don't remember. Uh, and yeah, they're they're good little ball players. They definitely gonna be able to play pretty good. Um, and then you got a guy like Gerard, who we all love to rag, you know, G this, G that. But listen, when he's when he's on, when he's in the zone, he could be a fantastic hitter. Uh, the problem is, will he be in the zone? Will he be on? Or will he be on his uh, third tall boy of steel reserve by uh, 845 in the morning? So we'll have to find out. G's a wild card. Um, but I think, again, two that's teams. what Stone's Stone had a podcast. Say it again. I was going to say, uh, Stone had a podcast the other day where he said the, the key for G is going to be f- finding the right mix of alcohol for him. If they yeah. can get that right right mix in him early in the morning, then, you know, then who knows? But yeah, and, and I think G, I know G didn't even play goal this week because he's got a lot of traveling going on. So he's going to be very, a very interesting mindset when he shows up yeah. on uh, Friday night in New York. And, uh, we shall see. This is a great matchup. Again, another very even matchup. Love to see it. All right. So we're going to move back to group A. We should be on matchup six, correct? That's right. All right, here we go. Mm-hmm. All right, the first team here for matchup six will be the eight balls. Paul, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about the eight balls? So the eight balls are uh, the representative from the Circle City Wiffle Ball League out in Indianapolis, Indiana. Great league they have out there. Uh, they hosted the NWA tournament. They have one of the nicest fields in the country in the dirt yard. Um, but they're, they're more than just that. This is this is a real good team. Um, their name, the Eight Balls, plays tribute to uh, the veteran member of the team, Mike Speak Senior, who's um, who's been playing in a national champ. He's been playing in big tournaments since the late 1990s. Um, back when I started, he was in the Chicago Eight Balls were the team was a name that was kind of around. He played a couple of fast plastic national championships in the mid 2000s. He's been around forever. 
Uh, his son, Mike Speak, has been one of the one of the best pitchers, um, um, kind of one of the best under the radar pitchers, I guess you would say, for kind of all over. Um, even like even even on the NWA tournament scene, he hasn't pitched a whole lot, but he's been one of the best pitchers in Circle City for years and years. He's a good arm. Then they come with Will Smithy, who's also one of the best pitchers from Circle City, real solid, uh, good pitcher. Their wild card um, is this guy Reed Warner. Um, if you saw the tweet from Circle City the other day with him of him um, practicing for this tournament, he hit 98. He's got a real good arm. He was a pitcher uh, in D2 baseball, I think, up until a couple of years ago. So he's got that live arm. It's just a question of whether he can harness it. And then they got Brandon Dudas, who's the uh, commissioner of uh, CCW. Really good hitter, really great guy. So this is, this is a good, solid team. Um, I'll be interested to see who they match up against because they've got a chance to win a couple of games. No, no, let's see who it's going to be. And I know that some people believe they, they're upset that the April is not a reference to cocaine, but you know what? I've got to keep it quick friendly. All right, here we go. Let's see who they're going to be facing. And they're going to be facing, it looks like, so... No, not Southeast Texas. It's Slaughterhouse. Uh, returning for a second year. That's correct. Yeah. So this is um, like eight balls are basically CCW's representative. Slaughterhouse is basically BWBL out of Wilts. Uh, Barry PA's representative this is their second year in a row. Uh, they had a nice little run last year. They went two and three. They eliminated the short balls. They were definitely um, they were definitely the underdog in that game. They eliminated them. They hung around a little bit against Way Too Beautiful until they ran out of gas. They got a couple arms. The Col- I'm going to pronounce the name wrong, but the Colaudi Col- brothers, Anthony and Brett, real good pitchers. Uh, they play medium pitch up there in BWBL, but these guys have live arms. Um, they've got some veteran players. That, that's that's another solid matchup where it's a coin toss. All right, love to see that. Love to see coin tosses. All right, so let's move over to now Group B. This will be matchup six, and we'll pause. That'll leave us with eight teams remaining, uh, four matchups remaining, and then we'll check out our schedule uh, at the current moment. Here we go. This is Group B, matchup number six, team number one. <laughs> Got the Bombers. A Bombers. A little homage to one of the original Golden Stick Wiffle Ball franchises, the Bombers. Uh, Paul, uh, who's on this team and what makes them so dangerous? So this is a uh, this may be the newest you know team or players in the tournament. These guys um, only have one tournament experience under their belt. They played at the MAW Staten Island tournament. Um, win 0 and three. But the thing that the thing that differentiates these guys from a lot of new teams is they got. They got two arms. Uh, they're led by two brothers, uh, Tom and Tyler. Really good pitch. I don't want to say really good, but like coming from a really good foundation. Um, in their first tournament, they were already polished. They were already throwing strikes. Uh, you know, Tom's more of kind of an old school pitcher, riser. Um, you know, no real screwball. Really sort of heavy riser, and then a couple others. Tyler's more of a you know, more of a modern pitcher, heavy screwball, mixes in a hard riser. So I'm throw a change or two. So they got, they got two pitchers. Hitting's going to be their big thing. They didn't hit much in MAW. And I, you know, I think they know it's going to take a while um, to come around. But yeah, this is another team that if you're expecting, if you match up against these guys and you're just expecting a cakewalk pitching wise, you're probably not going to get it. They're going to they're gonna make you, you know, if you beat them, they're going to make you earn. Uh, these guys are from like the South Jersey, Philly area, correct? Yeah, yeah. They're from, yeah. So they, it's funny. I was, I was saying this the other day to Tim. They uh, they identified their team being from South Jersey, and then like all the members are from Pennsylvania or Philadelphia. But I, I don't know how that I don't know how that Philly South Jersey <laughs> politics works. But yeah, South Jersey Philly area. So. Nice. Yeah, I think I think when I when I played in that uh, stand out tournament, I believe uh, they, these were the guys that I faced. We were trying to recruit them for Golden Stick. Great dudes. Like you said, young players. They seem very into it. Definitely can throw. So again, a team that you don't want to just uh, you don't want to walk over anybody. You don't wanna, you don't want to take anybody lightly at this event. Yeah. Uh, especially a team that you know nothing about. All right, so let's see who they're going to be facing in their first round matchup. This is team number two, matchup six, group B. Then we'll pause. We'll have eight teams remaining, four matchups remaining. Fire me up. Oh, wow. And we're going to keep it in the same yeah. general geographic region with the Ridley Park Long Balls. Love to see this. A little regional matchup here at United Buffalo. Yeah, so we mentioned you know, Ridley Park earlier when they came off the board. Um, the Long Balls were the main team for uh, Ridley Park last year in the tournament. This year they kind of take on a secondary role, but don't look past this team. Um, it's a different look for the Long Balls, but they 
They still, they still go three pitchers deep. Uh, Nate Smith, who was a Saturday MVP last year, he beat both the juggernauts and Swain, yo, back to back um, to uh, earn that award. Very uh, he's on this team this year. He's a good left-handed pitcher, good left-handed hitter. Uh, their kind of wild card is this guy, Greg Myers, who's a longtime player in the Ridley Park Wiffle Ball League, but hasn't really played much uh, else. He's played one MAW tournament. That's it. Um, he's just not going to blow you away with his stuff, but he's got good stuff. He knows how to pitch. He's got a lot of pitches. He can locate them. Um, so they got two pitchers there. Colin, Pol- I think Colin Polag is their real, um, uh, I know I just say Myers is kind of, you know, their uh, X factor, but I think it's really Colin. Colin didn't hit it all this year. I think the yard open really turned him around. Um, it's really as the long balls made a run to the uh, comeback uh, uh, cup championship. Mm-hmm. After that, he hit real well in the MAW playoffs. He hit real well at the NWA tournament. If he can hit, um, you know, this team, if he can hit and, and Greg and um, uh, Nate can, uh, you know, put up some zeros. This team can, this team can do something. I agree. You get another team with a lot to prove chips on the shoulder. Uh, they want to make they want to continue to put Ridley Park on the map. So, all right, let's take a look at our matchups here. We have, um, let's see, we've got six matchups complete in both brackets. So the last four matchups we just did, we had in bracket A, we got the Ridley Park All-Star team uh, against the OG Goon Squad. Uh, and then they will take on the winner of Eight Balls and Slaughterhouse. And we're going to move over to bracket B, Anarchy, Anarchy and Claws will face the winner of Bombers and Long Bulls. Again, another example here of, of a group of four teams that basically – are very excited to know that their next matchup is a possibly a winnable game and not, they're not facing a, a juggernaut and they can easily go two and and put themselves in a very good position. You know, it's, it's really worked out uh, um, well so far in that regard. There's, there's a lot of coin tosses. Like I don't think any of these teams are, you know, jumping for joy with these matchups because they, you know, if they know who the other team is, they know they're tough. But like you said, they're all winnable games. It's not, you know, only the dragons so far have ended up with like the phenoms, you know, there's only, there's, there's only kind of like, um, you know, one of those really sort of, you know, matchups that are going to be tough, but everything else is, you know, more or less a coin flip, you know, keggers meets, maybe not, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of winnable games for a lot of different teams. And that's what you love to see. I agree. With and, you, and, and, and there are going to be a lot of good games too. Yeah, they're all going to be very competitive. And listen, you know, some people say the only, you know, the only downside to the fast pitch events is that the, the games tend to be low scoring and maybe there's not as much action. But I think with a lot of these matchups, I think there's going to be a lot of action. I think there's going to be a lot of offense. Yes. Um, I think even with even with the good pitching, I still think there's going to be guys going to put the bat on the ball because it's not the elite, elite pitching that we're uh, used to seeing, especially in the final four and the final eight. So, all right. So, listen, we've got eight teams remaining. Uh, we've got four matchups, two in each group. All right. Let me, uh, I just wanted to plug my laptop in real quick because I'm sure that's the last thing we want to have happen is how <laughs> this, yeah, we're not this is going so well. Let me find that adapter. There it is. LFG adapters. Tree electricity. All right. All right, so let's rock and roll. All right. Getting down to the nitty gritty here. That's it. Eight more teams. Who's going to pull out? Brackets or groups A and group B here for a national championship this Saturday. Team number one is that going to be? Ooh, it's the High Rollers, right? A team that's played uh, in ECW a handful of times this year. Again, a very deep roster. Paul, tell us a little bit about them. Yeah, so uh, um, High Rollers, uh, Dan Haverty, Mike Tui, um, Ryan Patnode. Um, Dylan Coster and Cooper Ruckel. So, you know, e- e- even though I know Hav's arm has been, you know, pretty, pretty banged up uh, most of this year, uh, you know, this team still has more than enough pitching, even without him. Uh, they've got, they've got probably the most maybe electric, you know, duo with Tui and, and, and Ruckel. If both of those guys are on, you know, that's going to be a big deal. You got the veteran noter who can fill in basically wherever you need him to fill in. If it's Saturday, you can pitch. If it's Sunday, you can pitch. Um, and these guys can hit too. Coster's a good hitter. Habs is a good hitter. Noter's a good hitter. Um, so this is a really deep team. This is this is obviously, if you're looking at this group of 32, um, on paper, this is probably one of the top four. I agree. And a good balance of veteran players too. Noter's a, an enigma because he's a guy who doesn't overpower you, but always seems to get people out. 
and uh, he's just a crafty guy. He loves to pitch up and in. His, his pitches move a little bit. They move a lot. I don't know. He's just very. He's just a tough guy to hit, and he's been pitching for a long time. So obviously, he's doing something right. So I agree. Yeah. High rollers have a lot of opportunity here, and again, based on their matchup, could easily go two and zero. So let's see who they're going to be facing in that first round matchup. Who's a matchup number seven? Number two, who's it going to be? Facing the village idiots, who I believe are from Georgia. Is this correct? That's correct. Yeah, this is their. Uh, this is the village idiots' uh, fifth MCT, I believe. Um, a, a few um, golden stick ones, a couple fast plastic ones. Um, their captain Trent Jones played last year with Savvy up here in UW, uh, but this is their return to the national championship after a couple of years. They're going to be a little short-handed. It's uh, Trent and his brother Justin, and then a new player. Um, I think his name is Dylan Tabor, um, who's a, a baseball player. He's got that baseball background. I'm not sure if he's done much with football. Uh, but, you know, again, just another another sort of team out there in the whole collection of them um, that, you know, has some pitching, can make things competitive. If things break their way, you know, they can pull an upset or two. Um, we'll have to see. I was say they're only a three-man roster, correct? That, that's correct, yeah. So, so that correct. tends to be, I would say, a little bit of a it gives them. A, if anything, it's a disadvantage because you don't have that natural depth just by having more guys. You yeah. know, you have to play the field every inning. You can't rest. So if you're pitching and you struggle, you got to get right back out there. So sometimes going as a three could be at a disadvantage. But hey, you never know. It just sounds like more at bats as well. Yep, Justin Jones uh, played in the minor leagues a couple of years ago. COVID really has kind of put an end to that. So like you know, they got some guys that can hit. All right. All right. So this is that's uh, matchup number uh, seven, group A. So let's yep. head on over to group B, matchup number seven here. We've got six teams remaining. Love that. Love when I don't actually believe teams. I can do it twice. <laughs> I still don't know how happens, but going well so far. Okay. Very happy to be here on a beautiful Monday evening. I'm to 10 o'clock on the East Coast, 7 o'clock Pacific. And we've got Bad Batch. All right. So this is the third Ridley Park team. Um, you know, as their name, I think kind of, you know, pokes a little fun at, uh, you know, the idea that they're kind of the leftovers here. They're the, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, the, the, they're the odd team out, but uh, don't let that fool you. Um, this is just how deep Ridley Park goes. They're captained by Frankie Campanelli. Um, Frankie's arm's really beat up. He's going to have surgery soon, but I, I still think he may try to throw because he's going to have the surgery <laughs> anyway. Um, they got a real good young right-hander, a big young right-hander named Brendan Bowes. Uh, he was a rookie this year in Ridley Park and played a little bit in MAW. Throws, throws hard. Um, got in some really good experience in MAW this year. Got to play good teams like Voodoo. Got to face guys like, you know, Steffi and Toast and Jordan. Um, and, you know, didn't, didn't, it, it didn't, yeah, they're okay. And, uh, and, and, and didn't look overmatched at all. And that's big. And they've got, they've got another couple pitchers. Um, you know, so this is, again, this is one of these teams you don't want to face early. Late, they may run out of gas early. You don't want to face. Agreed. And again, like you said, the perks of playing in a, in a league like MAW, you get to face a lot of these pitchers during the regular season. Sure, they may not be throwing 100% because they know they're trying to save it for you with, but still you get to see their repertoire, you get to see their tendencies, and it's basically like a little like preliminary games yep. for when you get to face them on the national stage, so it can always help them, so that's a very good point. All right, let's see who they're going to be facing, correct? Matchup number seven, team number two, group B. Let's see who they will be facing. We have our final Texas team off the board here. Southeast Texas Wiffle Ball. Um, again, Texas well represented here. Paul, uh, what is this team going to have to do to win this game? Uh, so this team's going to have an uphill battle, and, and they know it. This is the uh, winner of the uh, drops backyard to big league contest, um, which – uh, basically helped a uh, a team of backyard players get to the national championship. So these guys are like, like it says, are from Southeast Texas. They're young. Um, they're, you know, I think they're here for the experience more than anything else. This is good. No one's going to learn and have more fun than these guys. Um, you know, I think wins are going to be hard to come by, but this is going to be a heck of an experience. I know they're pumps, um, uh, you know, to get this. So, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be a fun team to watch and, um, you know, I'm sure they're going to have fun everyone when they're playing and they're going to, like I said, they're going to learn a ton. If you, if you happen to play these guys, you know, uh, 
um, you know, help them out, just, you know, give them all the knowledge you can. Cause uh, they've, you, I, I, I've, I've watched a bunch of their videos that they submitted for the contest and you know, the, they're young, they're very, very young, but like you can see they kind of have the base for it. You know, they scuff their balls, they cut their balls. You can see some sliders that move. Um, they got the base. It's a learning experience for us. You can't, you can't buy this kind of learning experience. No, no doubt. And they're definitely going to, you know, this is one of those opportunities. They're going to see all these other balls that are being scuffed. They're going to learn all these new cuts. They're going to see how other, everyone else is playing and they're going to go back home with a lot of knowledge. And that's all we can ask for when you come to a national championship. As much as it is a competitive tournament, it's also like a, um, it's like a really big festival kind of of just wiffle ball from all over the country yeah. there to learn and meet new people. So that's a great job by them making it. All right. Uh, so we've got four teams remaining. We've got two matchups, uh, matchup eight, group A and matchup eight, in group B. Um, we've got two mid-Atlantic teams left. We've got Fanway wiffle ball and the old line from Maryland making their second appearance. So let's see how this is going to shake out here. This is going to be matchup number eight in group A. Looks like we've got fan, the vibe from Fanway making their uh, – this is Fanway sending – this is the same team from last year or is this a different team? So it's, it's – yeah, it's one of the uh, – they sent two teams last year. Uh, this is basically the same team as the vibe last year. Uh, they added um, – I think just one player, uh, Nico Racine. Um, but the core four of this team are members of the Giants in uh, the Fanway Wiffle Ball League. They won back to back championships in 20, in 2020, 2021. So this is definitely, you know, uh, four or five of the league's best. Uh, these guys, you know, came in last year for the experience and, you know, walked away. Um, sort of with their, with their mind, with their um, eyes open to this whole wiffle ball world outside of family. Family has been around forever, but I don't think they've traveled much. Um, so their captain, Steve Colella is a really good pitcher. I know he spent a lot of time working on his stuff in the off season. I expect them to do a little bit better this year. Yeah, I agree. I think last year they actually, the two family teams face each other in that first right. matchup, yep. uh, which was both fun, but also kind of like, Oh man, I wish we got to, you know, maybe face somebody different. We traveled all the way here and we had to yep. face uh, our neighbors. But then again, you know what, that's a, for both of them, it was a winnable first game because they know each other. So let's see how they do this year and let's see who they're going to be facing. Uh, this next team that is picked will be their opponent. And then the last two teams, that'll be the matchup number eight and group number B and group letter B, excuse me. And it looks like Fanny will be facing MAW's finest, the Yaks of York or the York Yaks. Uh, Shiree, it should be an interesting team. Yeah, and uh, Shiree's Shiree, playing yeah, this yeah. year. So, um, uh, yeah, so like, you know, the, 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 the Yaks are another one of those teams that um, you don't want to play early or medium. And that's, you want to play early in this tournament or even sort of midway through. And that's because of Jared Bull. Um, he's their main pitch there and he can kind of pitch all day. He's a real tall guy, so you expect power from him. You don't get power from him. You get stuff that you think you should hit. I remember walking by a game earlier in the MAW season this year where um, the uh, Bull was pitching against uh, Voodoo. I can't remember if it was – I think it was, it was either Steffi or Jordan. It was one of them. Said, like, you know, I feel like we should be hitting you – know, I, I feel like we should be, you know, crushing this guy. Like, we're not. Like, it's, you know, he, you know he, he throws hard, but he doesn't throw hard. Like, he's kind of like one of those pitchers where, like, and he's, but he's got a track record of success, five years of really a great under the radar pitcher. And also look out for um, Brendan uh, Baranowski, who is an addition to the acts for this tournament. Brendan's out of Michigan. Uh, he plays in a few leagues, he plays in KWL. He plays in MLW. He's played in MLW tournaments. He's got a, he's got a live arm, sometimes struggles with command, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him first time up close. Yeah, no doubt. Um, all right. So listen, that's going to do it. So the last two teams remaining here, the Stompers and Old Line Wiffle Club, uh, they will round out Group B matchup uh, number eight. So, Paul, I'm going to make you the host one last time here so we can review all of our matchups. And that's it. We're set. 44 teams have, excuse me, 44 teams have their position set for this Saturday. Um, who's going to be in Route 1? Who's going to be in Route 2? Who's going to play under the lights? Who's going to make it to Sunday? Well, I guess we'll just have to find out. So here's our final matchups here. Uh, in bracket A, we've got the High Rollers versus the Village Idiots. And they'll take on the winner. Uh, the winner of that will take on the winner of the Fanway Vibe and the York Yaks. Um, I think we can all agree that it's probably going to be High Rollers versus Yaks. 
in that in a one and all matchup there possibly. Don't wanna don't wanna ruffle any feathers, but I think that's a fair um, assumption. And then in bracket B, we've got Bad Batch versus Southeast Texas. Uh, the winner of that will take on Stompers or Old Line Wiffle Club. Um, probably uh, that's looking like a Stompers Bad Batch uh, second round matchup. Uh, what do you think about that, Paul? Yeah, I, I, I think those are probably, um, you know, fair assumptions. You, ne you, you never know, you know, the, uh, I think the Fanway Yaks match is going to be a good one. Um, uh, you know, I think the Yaks just with a little bit more experience in, in this style may have the edge, but yeah, again, sort of, you know, some, some pretty even matchups, um, you know, high, of those four games, maybe the high rollers game is the one uh, that kind of swings, you know, the, the most one way, um, just because village idiots are short. Oh, and obviously bad batch, uh, Southeast Texas, but yeah, a, a lot of interesting, fun matchups. And again, a lot of teams you can look in these groupings and I, I think, you know, almost to a team, um, I would say there's 32 teams here. I would say maybe 24 or so of these teams, 20 of these teams are going to go into their first game thinking they've got a shot to go one and oh, and then a real shot to go two and oh. Um, and so it, it kind of worked out nice in that regard. Lots of even matchups, lots of opportunities for teams. I agree. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, again, for me, um, I'm my favorite part about this Saturday morning is I get to walk around and meet all these new players and new teams that I've really never met, especially from areas like Missouri, uh, Michigan. So this is a good time for me. And again, this should be some really quality wiffle ball being played here. Like you said, a lot of these teams expect to go one and oh, maybe go two and oh, because they feel like they have a good matchup. Even if they go one and one, they know that that third game is probably going to yeah. be a winnable matchup. So a lot of, I don't know, just a lot of opportunity here in route one for this event. Um, I think that's going to do it though, Paul. Um, if you have any other final thoughts, I think we could sign off for the night. We've been here for about an hour. We've got about four days until United Wiffle on Saturday. We have the Friday night fan fest, uh, home run derby is going to be happening. We're partnering with MLW major league Wiffle to put on a fantastic Friday night fan fest. Please buy your tickets beforehand. If you have not bought your tickets be, uh, beforehand yet, so you can get in. Um, we're going to have all kinds of actions. Again, there's going to be simultaneous home run derbies. There's going to be a, a lot of food eating going on. Very excited for that. We'll have some food reviews. Uh, we'll have raffles. We'll have jerseys. We'll have equipment. We'll have bats. It's just going to be a lot of fun. The weather's going to be fantastic on Friday. I believe some of us are going to go golf in the morning. Uh, it's going to be like 75 degrees. It's almost identical to last year where Friday was really warm. Yes, yeah. Saturday was nice. Got a little cool. And then Sunday this year, I think, looks like it's going to be better than last year's Sunday. But virtually the same weather. And, you know, it's middle of October in central Pennsylvania. I think uh, we're going to get lucky for the second year in a row. Yep. Yeah. You're going to have a nice, definitely have a little fall weather, a little chill on Sunday, but you know, that, that that's what you want with the championships on the line. You know, it, it feels like a baseball playoff. So yeah, uh, like you said, I'm looking forward to a lot of great events this weekend and really just being able to sit down and watch all these good teams play. Please, please do yourself a favor. And, you know, when you're not playing or, you know, if, if you're in route two and getting there early, you know, watch some of these teams, you don't get a chance to watch because you're going to, you're going to see a lot of cool players and a lot of, and get to meet a lot of cool people. So uh, that's what this is all about. I agree. All right. For Paul Cook, I'm your host, Anthony Dioria. Uh, it's been a great time with you tonight and uh, we're looking forward to a great tournament. Again, Fan Fest on Friday, uh, games on Saturday, championship game, probably sometime Sunday afternoon. Um, LFG, fire me up. Let's get there. Come on. Have a good night, everybody. See ya.